Hey everyone, it's Ujwal again. So great to see you. Today, we're going to be talking about which schools you should be applying to in order to maximize your shot of getting into med school. Hey everyone, it's so great to see you again. My name is Ujwal. Today, we're going to be talking about the five characteristics that you should keep in mind before you craft your medical school list. Creating your school list is probably one of the most exciting parts of the application cycle, but it's also one of the parts that you need to strategize and can really make a difference in terms of how successful you're going to be. Why is that the case? Well, med schools work a lot differently as opposed to undergraduate institutions. Certain medical schools are going to accept a certain number of students within the region, and other medical schools may have a preference with regards to the types of students that they accept based on their core mission and values. So it's very important to keep these things in mind as you're crafting your medical school list. So the first thing that you should be keeping in mind and using to your advantage is your MCAT and GPA. Now, these are going to be two of the most important pillars in your application. Although numbers don't make the applicant, they are important in order to get your foot in the door for a lot of medical schools. So how can you use these two numbers in order to determine which schools you should be applying to? First things first, you can always turn to your trusty AAMC MSAR resource. This is a resource provided by the AMC in which they list the GPA and MCAT ranges for all the medical schools in the U.S., and you can use that to help determine which schools you should be applying to based on where you fall for each different school. Now, I'm also going to address another quick question that a lot of students tend to have. If your MCAT or GPA range falls perhaps within the 10 percentile, 90 percentile range, and it's closer on the lower end, a lot of students tend to ask whether they should still apply to that school. And the answer is this. Usually the students who are getting in who are a lot further down from the 50th percentile score are students who have overcompensating strengths or other aspects of their application that can give them an advantage in getting in. So what kind of strengths are those? If you have an amazing research experience and you have some kind of publications coming out of that, or if you had a very unique opportunity in your undergraduate years, or perhaps if you did some kind of other unique experiences, those can really help you stand out and overcompensate and help overcome those weaknesses, perhaps that your MCAT or GK may be uh, placing on your application. And so those are the students who are getting in. So the question, should you apply to these schools? Well, the answer is going to depend on your situation. If you're on a tight budget and you want to be applying to schools that are going to maximize your shot of getting in, it may not be a great idea to apply to those schools where your MCAT and GPA may be on the lower end. But saying that, if you do have a larger budget, you're willing to spend the extra money to apply to your REACH schools and give yourself that shot, there is no harm in doing so. And it is very well possible that you can definitely get in because there's always students who may not have an overcompensating strength, as I mentioned earlier, but end up getting an interview, end up getting an acceptance. And that is definitely possible because we never know what the medical school admissions committee is looking for exactly. It's like a black box is the great analogy that uh, people tend to talk about because with med school admissions, you never know. Just because you have a great MCAT or GPA doesn't mean you will get in, and just because you don't doesn't mean you won't. So that's why it's very important to give yourself the shot if you have the opportunity to do so. But if not, making sure you're applying to the right schools that are going to give you the best shot of getting in is my recommendation. All right, so we talked about the first criteria. Now let's move on to the second. All right, so the second criteria that you guys should be keeping in mind is whether the school's mission and values fit you as a person and applicant. What does this mean? Each school has a mission statement. Now, yes, a lot of the mission statements do overlap. There's a lot of similarities between them. But if you dig a little deeper, go through the school's webpage and try to maybe even talk to a few med students if you know anyone there, or talking to people before you who have already applied, you can get a better sense of what the school is really about. Some schools really care about non-clinical volunteering. Some schools really care about research experiences. Those tend to be the top 30 ranked schools. Um, we're not going to get into what those schools actually are because it changes. But there's some schools which are consistently known for valuing high quality research. And so those schools are going to be looking for students who maybe have multiple research experiences uh, in different labs. And maybe they're looking for students who also have publications. Those can put those students at an advantage at those schools. Other schools are primary care focused. 
So these schools are going to be focusing more so on your involvement in the community and your experiences in terms of helping out, so volunteering, clinical and non-clinical. And those are going to be very important there. So as you can see, there's a lot of different schools based on the type of applicant you are, your interests, and you can apply to schools based on that. One thing I remember as I was applying is there's also certain programs out there that not many people talk about. Some of them are new, but they are out there to help people pursuing a career in primary care. So some of these are three-year MD programs, such as the one at New York University, Long Island. So that's basically an institution that is affiliated with NYU. It's a three-year MD program, gives you a guaranteed acceptance to a primary care residency with free tuition. Uh, who can say no to that? So you have programs such as these, and there's a lot of other three-year MD programs which can help you get into a primary care career a little earlier with a little less of a bill at the end of the day. And so you should also be taking a watch for those kinds of programs. A simple Google search can help you identify those programs. I'll be linking um, any uh, such information down below uh, as it comes up, um, but definitely do your research in terms of what kind of schools you are applying to. All right, so we talked about the second criteria, now let's move on to number three. All right, so the third criteria is make sure you apply to schools which you would actually attend if offered admission. This is a mistake a couple of students make, myself included, where we tend to apply to all these schools, but there are certain schools that even if we had the opportunity to attend, we would not. Now, that could be either due to location or other reasons, but it's very important to not waste money applying to a school or an institution where you would not even consider attending, perhaps even an interview if offered. If you don't apply to those schools, what it does is effectively lets you apply to another school, puts your money in a better place, and it also gives other applicants an opportunity for those who are applying. And so it's better to save everyone and yourself some time and money and apply to schools which you would actually attend, which you're really excited for, and not apply to schools which you wouldn't attend even if offered admission. All right, so the fourth criteria that we're gonna be talking about is apply to schools nearby. What do I mean by nearby? So this is where your in-state schools come in, schools that are inside your state. Now, some schools, such as most public schools, will give you the preference or give you a little bit of an advantage if you are a state resident. So that could definitely come to your advantage. There's also going to be advantages in terms of tuition for in-state residents, and so you could definitely take advantage of that as well. But you should not only be applying to schools which are strictly within your state, you should also be applying to schools that are nearby, even if they are not particularly in your state. What does that mean? Well, I live in Northern Virginia. So in addition to applying to all my Virginia schools, I applied to the schools in DC because I live very close to DC. That's where I went to undergrad. And I also applied to schools um, near Maryland. And so the reason why you would do this is because medical schools understand that students who live close by have a better chance of attending the school if offered admission because of proximity to their family, which is essentially their support system. And so they understand that. And that's something that you can take to your advantage. And it can serve you very well when you're actually in med school because you will actually have your family and support system nearby. And that's a huge advantage. And so that's why when you're applying, make sure you apply to your in-state schools and schools that are close by because that gives you a tremendous advantage, not only in terms of admissions, but also in terms of how you will be supported during your medical school years. All right, so that's the fourth criteria. Now let's move on to the fifth and final one. All right, so the fifth and final criteria that you should be considering is whether you're applying to schools which have a regional bias. Schools which have a regional bias are gonna prefer applicants who are coming from that specific region, such as the Northwest of the United States. They're gonna put other students who are coming from outside the region at a small disadvantage. And so it's very important to make sure that you consider whether you're applying to such schools. And second, only apply to those schools if you have a strong connection to their region. You should be able to talk about your connection when you're writing your essays. It may even come up in a conversation with any of the faculty members or in an interview. And so it's very important to make sure you keep that in mind. And the last thing, in addition to this, is make sure that you understand some schools work on a different interview cycle. Some will be interviewing a lot earlier than others, and you will be surprised at how quickly spots can fill up at certain schools. So that information isn't that easy to come by. 
and easiest way of getting access to such information is just talking to previous people who have applied if you have those resources available. If not, if you have a pre-med advisor, you can ask them to put you in touch with someone who has applied before you and they can maybe give you that information. Another resource is SDN Reddit. So a lot of students there post when they got interviews and what time uh, they got their acceptances. And although it's not wise to be spending all your time on SDN or Reddit trying to uh, figure out what's going on when, it could be really helpful when you're making plans for when you should be finishing up which application. Because for schools which work on a rolling basis, it might be to your advantage to finish those applications beforehand because spots are going to fill up as you go through the cycle. Whereas other schools will be interviewing all their applicants throughout the whole interview season and only make offers of admission, rejection, wake lists, whatever it is at the end. So that would be uh, the following year. All right. So we talked about uh, all these criteria that you need to keep in mind. Um, let's talk about one more thing before we end this video, and that is how many schools you should be applying to. It's a common question students ask. And the answer is it depends, right? So it depends on your budget. On average, most applicants will be applying to somewhere around 20 to 25 schools. It could be a little less than 20 on average, but this is the number of schools a lot of people apply to. Now, you definitely may have heard of a student who applied to a lot more than these schools, and that's also normal. There are students who apply to a lot more. And so the answer really is it depends, as I said earlier, on your budget. But on top of that, it also depends on how many schools you're interested in. If you're significantly passionate and really interested in a whole number of schools and you really want to apply for those and you have the budget to do so, by all means, go for it. But make sure you understand that it is not a requirement or a necessity for you to be applying to a significant number of schools in order to get in. If you craft an appropriate medical school list, then applying to schools between 20 to 25 schools should be enough in order to secure a couple of interviews, and that should be more than enough as long as practice your interview skills and I'll make another video about how you can do so um, in order to secure a spot at a medical school. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave a comment down below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. And as always, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you guys in that next one.